Um, I have a video of Michael Irvin that was... Shit. Fuck. Hey. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking wind. Ow. Hmm. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up those football gods. What's up, guys? Boy, could I, we need your help, guys. We need your help. You know, um, it's finally Friday. Hope you guys tune into our live stream, nine o'clock Eastern. We'll be working on giving away some of the shirts and things and some of the uh, plaques. I've got actually a lot of those autograph plaques, uh, Michael Irvin, uh, Randy White, and things like that we're going to be giving away because we've got another autograph signing show next weekend that we'll be going to, and I'll be getting some more. I believe we got Jay Novacek's going to be there. Um, I know Michael Irvin's going to be there. Emmett Smith. <laughs> Emmett Smith might be a little too much cheddar right there for Emmett. Uh, but we'll definitely be getting some more to be giving to you guys, the fans. So today we are dealing with the fallout of Trevor Lawrence getting paid. Trevor Lawrence. Oh my goodness. Trevor, no. Um, Trevor Lawrence got the second highest contract in the history of the NFL. Pat Mahomes has the highest, his 10-year, $450 million contract, which averages $45 million a year, which seems like chump change right now. Trevor Lawrence's $275 is tied with Joe Burrow's. Um, five years, $55 million a year. And in case you don't know where the hierarchy is here right now, is right now Pat Mahomes is at 45 million, Trevor Lawrence is at 55, Joe Burrow is at 55, Justin Herbert's at 52, Lamar Jackson's at 52, uh, Josh Allen is at 43, um, Jalen Hurts is at 51, Kyler Murray's at 46, Deshaun Watson is at 46, Jared Goff is at 53, Kirk Cousins is at 45, Nick Bosa, Oh, uh, why, why? Okay. I'm, 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 okay. Uh, his contract is actually bigger than Dak Prescott's because it was 170. But Dak Prescott at 12th at 140, tied with Daniel Jones at 140, and Matthew Stafford. So you're looking at this. Here's where it's kind of interesting to me because we've looked at, you know, thinking about all the quarterbacks going to get paid this year. You know, we knew that Trevor Lawrence to a. Uh, Jordan Love, um, Jared Goff, Dak Prescott would all be getting contracts this offseason. The number that it was thrown around early in the offseason was Dak Prescott, $60 million. People balked, oh, are you kidding me? $60 million. Well, now we've seen Jared Goff get $54 million, and now Trevor Lawrence get $55 million. Um, you have to, and I don't want to hear the haters say, oh, well, there's so much more upside with Trevor Lawrence that, you know, he's younger. He is younger. I will give you that. But thus far, he's been a turnover machine. And for a guy who's been the number one pick in the NFL draft, who everybody said was polished and ready to go, you have to say it's been a little bit of a disappointment. Now, let me read something from Yahoo Sports to you about what they were thinking about Trevor Lawrence before he got paid. It's the season of giving, specifically when it comes to NFL teams trying to retain or acquire quarterback talent. The Falcons gave Kirk Cousins a contract worth roughly $45 million a year, and the Lions most recently handed Jared Goff a deal that makes him the second highest paid quarterback in the league. Those teams, the Lions and Falcons, have set the templates for the next crop of young quarterbacks set to get paid. One of the next players coming up is, and I forgot Tua, by the way, 
uh, is Jaguars' Trevor Lawrence, who's set to be entrenched as a franchise quarterback for years to come. Lawrence has become a bit of a polarizing figure um, due to he was being billed as an elite prospect. This remains a no-brainer deal for the Jaguars. Lawrence deserves this. It's easy to see why Lawrence has distractor. He has been touted as a near-perfect prospect ready to be a star in the NFL from day one. That didn't happen in the way many had hoped, particularly because he is dealing with Urban Myers as a head coach, as a rookie. He has also had a steeper learning curve than many anticipated. Still, Lawrence is one of the shining examples of what it looks like for a good quarterback to play on a mediocre offense. Lawrence has one of the more aggressive styles in the league, according to Sports Info Solutions. Lawrence ranked 12th in air yards per attempt last season, despite really only having one receiver who could separate on a consistent basis on the field. That receiver, Calvin Ridley, is now with the division rival Titans. Lawrence's uh, touchdown to interception ratio isn't great, but he provides more on the field value than basic stats show. He's unafraid to take chances down the field, which results in some interceptions. Are we making excuses for him? Okay. Um, that's what the Jaguars need under center with their current offensive makeup. It's difficult to find Lawrence's level of skills and arm talent, even if he's not perfect quarterback yet. The exciting part of signing Lawrence to an extension is that he does have room to grow while they're already being a playmaker who can carry the offense from time to time. He definitely misses having the service of Ridley last season, but the Jaguars drafted LSU wide receiver Brian Thomas Jr. in the back half of the first round and still have Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram on the roster. It's not the 49ers, but this group should be good enough to look consist competent in most weeks. It's not a group that would fare well without the presence of a quarterback like Lawrence, which increases the importance. There's a possibility his deal tops what the Lions gave golf and brings him closer to challenging Joe Burrow as the highest paid. Okay. All right. So they're looking at that at upside. Okay. So I want to bring you to something else here. Here's what's interesting to me because as we look at this, as we look at this numbers, okay, this is from Sport Track. Um, market value, market value. This is what Sports Track says a player's contract value should be worth. And this being the free agents that are out there and so forth, or, or team players that are having expiring contracts. They had Trevor Lawrence, okay, at $46 million. At forty-six million is what they said your contract should be worth for your market value is worth forty-six million. Forty-six million four hundred, so four point six five. He gets eight and a half million more than that. Eight and a half million more. Um, wow, wow. What's really interesting here is I want you to think about this for a second. Justin Fields, Justin Fields' market value, Justin Fields, who just got traded basically for a ham sandwich, is valued at 44.895. Jared Goff, his market value was 38.353. which is just slightly ahead of C.D. Lamb. Jared Goff's market value by them is $38 million, and he gets $54 million. Okay. Jordan Love is the next one up from Trevor Lawrence. At 47.8, so a, a $1.3 million more, they say that Jordan Love is worth. And then above that, they say Tua, his market value is 49.6. Wait a minute. And above that is Dak Prescott at 50.877 market value. 
So wait a minute. <laughs> if we're looking at the market value that Sports Rack has versus what they're getting paid, $60 million at the moment seems like a bargain. If you're telling me that Jared Goff's market value was 38 and he got 54, if you're telling me <coughs> Trevor Lawrence's market value was 46 and he got 55, and you're telling me Dak Prescott's market value is 50, then 60 is basically the minimum. So what they're basically going to say is the next one up is going to be the next highest paid. Jordan Love, his contract's in the works right now. And um, I believe that they're trying to get that done before training camp. You got Tua's. They've been talking. He hasn't been happy. He hasn't showed up for everything out there. Um, his deal will probably get done before training camp. And then there's little old Dak Prescott. Whew. It doesn't matter what you think a person is worth a player's worth it's one of those things that i can take a house in alabama that might cost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars i can take that exact same house and i can put it in montgomery county maryland and that same house is worth one point $2 million. It's the same house, but it's location, location, location that changes what the market is. And so here we have a situation where Dak Prescott is in the high rent district and there's nothing you can do about it. Now you can turn around and say, we're not going to pay that guy. But at the moment, when you look at Kirk Cousins getting $45 million, $45 million for Kirk Cousins with a ruptured Achilles tendon who is getting old. Sorry, there's no such thing as a cheap quarterback anymore. Daniel Jones, remember, who may be done this year. Drew Locke might take his spot before the season's over. Got $40 million last year. So when you look at this and you start saying, well, the Cowboys are going to have to get another quarterback and things, unless you do draft one and you're lucky enough to get a guy who's lights out, and I remind you that Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones was in his draft, um, so was Trey Lance and uh, Zach Wilson. And I'm still not sold on Trevor Lawrence being a great quarterback. And that's a whole draft right there that you've got right now, potentially one good one. Oh, I know. I forget. I'm sorry. Some people will say that Trey Lance is going to be a great one. Well, it remains to be seen this far in his career. Um, the fact that a team that gave up three number ones on him gave up on him should let you know that there is a, 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 a tough road to hoe to get there. So the problem for quarterbacks there's not many out there that can play. And if you want to go ahead and be the Washington Commanders and just say, we don't need a quarterback, then we can go in purgatory. Um, we're going to listen to this going out of here with uh, Pro Football Focus. I'm sorry, Pro Football Talk with Clarion Williams and Mike Farella explaining this. If you're going to have a big story, do it during business hours in the East when people are at work and they're looking for reasons yeah. to not work. They're not as <laughs> dialed in when they're on their own time. I'd much rather big news hit between the hours of, let's just say, 8 and 6. I, I won't be green. I won't go 9 to 5, although that's, that's even better. 8 and 6 is fine, East Coast time. But last night, late afternoon, early evening, came the news of Trevor Lawrence on – getting his new contract. Let's have a listen to the precursor to this. It's, this it's crazy. Just a couple of weeks ago at OTAs on his contract talks. Obviously, I'm, I'm aware of, of what's going on, but uh, I try to keep my focus on, you know, doing my job out here. You know, I've, I have full uh, belief that, that that'll take care of itself, and that's not something that I need to worry about. You know, that's why 
I pay people and, and hire people to do that for me. So um, that's not my job. But, you know, obviously I know what's going on. I'm aware of the situation. I think that's important too. But, yeah, I try to keep all my focus and energy on being the best player I can be to help us win. Do you have any timetable at all? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I think that would be that would be ideal, you know, just to, to put it behind us and, um, and keep moving and, and feel good about that going into training camp. But either way, like I've said before, I have the same job. So, you know, I can't always control all those um, factors, but I have the same job to do either way. You never know when the deadlines are actually going to be, and they call it a deadline-driven business, and that's a mantra we hear whenever a deal gets done right up against some real or artificial deadline. There's no deadline here. They still have weeks to go until the start of training camp if that was the deadline. But, you know, sometimes, and I applaud, I applaud the two sides who can get past the negotiating game and just say, let's get this done. Let's get this done. You know, we're adults here. I'll go toward my bottom line and I'll trust that you'll go toward your bottom line and not drag your feet until we get to a deadline and then you you try to pull me off my bottom line. That's where the reticence comes from to go to your bottom line in advance of a deadline. You get there early. When the deadline arrives, they're going to try to get a little more out of you. I prefer a more self-aware negotiation where they say, we just want to get this done now. Let's not play games. Let's not try to screw each other on this. Let's get this done. And kudos to the Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence's representatives for getting it done. Well, and Mike, as we always know, the sooner you get these done, the, the better, better it is for the team because the price is only going to go up. And I know we're going to talk about other yeah. quarterbacks a little bit later in this, but th this is going to end up being, if Trevor Lawrence is who they think he is and they drafted him number one overall, and they've obviously seen enough to think that he's that guy, otherwise there was no reason to sign him to this contract. So they, they think he's the guy. If he is, this is going to end up being a good deal because mm -hmm. they got it done before Tua, before Dak, before every other quarterback who's up for a contract extension at this point. So good for them, good for Trevor Lawrence that he now gets his money and now he can go prove that he's the guy that they drafted number one overall and that was supposed to be this generational talent. We mm -hmm. haven't seen all of that yet. Ain't seen he's none of that. Five years old. We've seen flashes of it. We've seen that we think he can do it, but now he's got to go do it. And he's got to cut down on those turnovers, which he's had way too many of it. 21 last year, which was mm -hmm. tight, which was third in the NFL. He has 60 over his career. Mm -hmm. That's just too many turnovers. But if he does that, Mike, I, I think this is going to end up being a good deal for the Jaguars. Well, especially because the market keeps going up. The salary cap keeps going up. I want to stop up. right there for a second because I want you to understand Trevor Lawrence, 21 TDs, 14 interceptions last year. Dak Prescott, he's garbage. 36 TDs, nine interceptions. And when you look at this, five years, $275 million, $55 uh, uh, million just a blows year, me away. Matches the, the high watermark set last year by Joe Burrow. Remember this. Two years were left on the Trevor Lawrence rookie deal. The full value at signing is going to be lower than 55. We'll have the full breakdown at PFT. We always try to get the deal, all the points, signing bonus, first year salary, second year salary. How many years are fully guaranteed? Have, it's not broken yet. Guaranteed is a practical matter. So far, what we know is 200 million is guaranteed generally at signing. 142 million fully guaranteed at signing. More of it may vest before they would ever get to the point where they would cut him. And one of the realities with most franchise quarterback contracts, mm. the player doesn't get cut. The player yeah. gets every penny. You don't need to guarantee it unless it is a mobile quarterback who might end up getting injured and becoming ineffective. That's when you might have a team looking to escape a contract prematurely. Usually you don't need to do it. And I think of Deshaun Watson – if he didn't have every penny fully guaranteed, the Browns could be looking to escape that contract already. So there's a benefit in having full guarantee last as long as possible if you want to make as much money as you can beyond the point where you're earning yep. the money at the level your contract would suggest. But the key with Lawrence is, as you said, get it done now because 55 today ah! might not have been 55 
in two weeks. Yeah. Tua yeah. does his deal. It's certainly not going to be in two years when it really starts hitting. There's a race by the Wonder team where we've heard that before. Deals done before other deals push the number higher. And that's been one of the big criticisms I've had of Jerry Jones for as great yeah. of a job they've done of finding young talent and developing young talent. They pay the wrong guys and they don't pay the right guys and they wait too long to pay the right guys and the price only goes up unless the guy has a catastrophic injury that limits his career. I mean, hell, Dak had the broken ankle and he still got four years, 160 before he ever set foot on a field again after that ankle healed. It's got to be something that obviously is going to make the player not who he was before you're in a position where the number goes down, not up. Otherwise, the number always goes up. Because that was, look, one of the things we say when Jared Goff gets $53 million, when Lawrence gets $55 million, when Tua gets whatever he's going to get, who are you bidding against? There's yeah. no one that's saying, I'll give him 54 5 There's no auction there for isn't. quarterback contracts. You're negotiating Unless you a are vacuum. But what you're Dak trying Prescott. to do is lock in before, and as Tua said last week, the market is the market. And the market's going to change. I still think... All right, I'm going to end it right there. But see, here's the thing. Yeah, you're bidding against yourself unless you're the Dallas Cowboys who screwed the pooch with the other contract. You can't franchise tag Dak Prescott. You can't. You are bidding against Dak Prescott. That's who you're bidding against. He can take it. Or he can leave it. And unlike all these other guys, if Trevor Lawrence said, no, that's not enough. Well, it's okay. We got you for two more years. And we can franchise tag you a couple of times. So you can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. Dak Prescott? Oh, but they could. If they didn't like what they hear, they could trade him and get something back. But see, here, here, the Dallas Cowboys... They're bidding against Dak Prescott because you can't trade him without his permission and you can't franchise tag him. Dak has all the leverage. And I hate to tell you all, the Cowboys with no quarterback ain't going to happen. All right, good people. I hope you all have a great day and tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. We'll be talking about all this. And oh, by the way, Uh, No, I'll, I'll bring that up later. See you guys tonight. Peace out. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is, have a